as we open up the scriptures today to look and meditate upon God's word pertaining to self-confidence. It's of utmost importance that we embrace negative within our lives, knowing that we will enter circumstances where things will not work exactly as we planned. Sometimes we'll forget the appointment. Other times we might miss the call. Other times we may not get the job. But this doesn't have a reflection on who you are as an individual, but it's simply on what God is calling you to accomplish and who God is calling you to be in your life. See, the subject of self-confidence is really interesting when it comes to the Bible, because many times we think, I shouldn't be confident in myself, because confidence is pride. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that pride comes before the fall. Our confidence should never be in our socioeconomic status. It should never be in our circumstances and our giftedness. It shouldn't be in what our parents told us. It shouldn't be in what our parents didn't tell us. Our confidence should never rest on what we have or what we don't have, upon our abilities or inabilities, upon what a teacher might have said to us in a grade that we were just forming in, or upon what a boss has said about us in an evaluation. Our confidence doesn't rest on the words of man, it doesn't rest on the wisdom of man. Our confidence must remain fully in Christ. And so right now, as we enter into scriptures pertaining to self-confidence, relax, take a big breath in, and breathe out. And I pray that as you walk into the job interview, as you have the tough conversation, as you step into a new season of your life, as you rest in who God's created you to be, that your confidence is found solely in His grace upon your life. So breathe in, breathe out, and say, God, my confidence rests solely in you. Come and fill my heart with confidence. The confidence that only can be by the grace of God. In Jesus' name. 1 John 5, 14 in the Amplified Version. This is the remarkable degree of confidence that we as believers are entitled to have before Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, that is, consistent with his plan and his purpose, he hears us. 1 John 5, 14 in the New King James says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Proverbs 3, 26 says, For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Proverbs 28, 26 he who trusts confidently in his own heart is a dull and thick-headed fool. But he who walks in skillful and godly wisdom will be rescued. Romans 15, 13 I pray that God, the source of all hope, will completely fill you with joy and peace because you trust Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3.12 Because of Christ and our faith in Him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Philippians 1.6 says, I'm convinced and confident of this very thing, that He who's begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of His return. Philippians 3, 3 through 4. Although I might be able to put trust in myself, if anyone thinks he has a reason to trust in himself, he should know that I have greater reason for trusting in myself. We are the ones who are not only circumcised, we worship God through the Spirit, and our pride is in Christ Jesus. We do not put trust in ourselves or anything we can do. Philippians 4, 13. In the Amplified reads, 
I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to do anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Philippians 4.13 in the message reads, Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Hebrews 4 and verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we might receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I'd encourage you to get in a steady posture of rest and think about that. You can enter into God's presence confidently. Shame often robs us of our confidence, our confidence to approach God. Guilt says, I've done something wrong, but shame says, I am wrong. And the scriptures often say that shame can cover your face. This means it's robbing you of your confidence. To recalibrate your heart in the confidence of God, you must first know that you can come to Him in confidence. So just sit back, just relax, just breathe in and breathe out and just say, God, I come to you in confidence. God, you are my confidence. Isaiah 32 and verse 17 says, And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. James 4, verses 14 and 15. What you ought to say is this, If the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like a morning fog. It's here for a little while, then it's gone. 1 Timothy 6.17 Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor put their hope in wealth, which is uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Jeremiah 17.7 But blessed are those who trust in the Lord, and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Right now, just say, God, I'm making you my hope and confidence. Come on, say it again. God, I'm making you my hope and my confidence. Psalm 27, 1 through 3, The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. You need to say that to yourself right now. No matter the attack that I'm going through, I can remain confident because my confidence is not in myself, but it's in Him. Isaiah 41, 9 through 10. It says, I pulled you in from all over the world, called you in from every dark corner of the earth, telling you you're my servant serving on my side. I've picked you, I haven't dropped you. Don't panic, I'm with you. There's no need to fear for I'm your God. I'll give you strength, I'll help you. I'll hold you steady and keep a firm grip on you. And I pray that as you enter your day today, and you enter whatever situation that you might need confidence in today. That these scriptures have encouraged your heart to know that yes, you don't have it all together. Yes, you're imperfect. And yes, things are not always going to work out. You are going to encounter trouble in this world, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. And in him, we can have a confident hope. We can have a confident assurance. Wherever you go, he goes before you. Wherever you go, he goes beside you. He's called you by name. So be confident, not in your own abilities, but in him who's called you. Just breathe in one last time. And breathe out. 
and just pray, God, I recognize that my confidence doesn't rest in me, but it rests in you. Fill up every space of my heart those areas that I need healing. Would you touch them right now so I can be filled with the confident hope that only you can bring? Lord, I place my trust, my confidence, and my hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can do this. You're smart. You're brilliant. You've got the mind of Christ. And God goes before you. Be confident today, not in yourself, but in him.